Welcome to this review of the work of the Dennis Hurley Centre in 2022. This is the first part of three. A year ago, when we gathered to review the work in 2021, we used a seven branch candlestick to recall the seven years that we have been operating. This year, I want to take you out of the Dennis Hurley Centre, away from the statue, and instead down into a deep, dark dungeon. It is the basement of the St. John's building where we store our books, a dark, dusty place full of secondhand books and yet full of magic. And I want to use the themes of the books that we sell, which are the key to our Streetlit programme, to present different aspects of our work over the last 12 months. The dungeon is divided into fiction and non-fiction and beautifully organised with books in all kinds of themes and, and, and subjects so that our booksellers can find the best books to sell around the city. We have books about art and we have a place for people to sit down and relax when they're busy choosing their books. So with this whole selection of books, how do I find books that help us to thematically focus on the areas of our work? Well, let me start off by recalling the opening words of Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And in many ways, 2022 has been the best of times and the worst of times for the Dennis Hurley Centre. We operate in two cities because it feels sometimes that there is a huge barrier that divides one part of Durban from another part. Barriers not necessarily of race anymore, but barriers of class, and of money and of comfort that means that one part of the city really doesn't recognize the other part. That's why our meal of reconciliation, which we held again on the day of reconciliation, the 16th of December, is such an important, iconic part of our year. A chance to gather over 500 people, homeless people and non-homeless people, to share a meal, to share space. And, and of course, it's not just sharing the meal, but sharing the conversation, having a chance to talk to somebody, to exchange a card, to talk about our respective lives in the city and to discover, we hope, what we have in common rather than what divides us. One geographic barrier to overcome is the famous Umgeni River, which seems to separate us from a large part of the rest of Durban. For some people, crossing the Umgeni is quite a, a traumatic experience. And so we go out to them. This was me speaking at Grace Family Church, both live and on video, to share with the people at Grace some of the work that we do. And then as a follow up, some people from Grace came to the centre. So we brought them to our part of the city to experience at first hand what it was like to be in the heart, the soul of Durban. We've always been overcoming religious barriers and we continue that. For example, all the school groups who come to work at the centre also visit the cathedral and the mosque and hear about the different religious traditions of Durban and how they continue to work side by side. And we've been trying to find new forms of connection. We were delighted that a group of young Israeli volunteers were staying and working in Durban and they came to the centre and uh, did a great intervention with our staff to talk about Judaism, to share their experience of Judaism, to share uh, uh, interesting insights about Judaism. For most of our staff, this was the first time they had ever met a Jew and helped deepen their understanding of Jesus the Jew, what role Judaism played in our own Christian tradition. And overcoming barriers of prejudice. Some uh, prejudices are much more obvious if they're about race or religion. Some around sex sexuality might be less obvious. And I was very struck by this t-shirt worn by a homeless person when we were at the National Conversation in Johannesburg, reminding us that within the homeless community, there are, of course, gay and lesbian and transgendered members of that community who face other forms of prejudice. And overcoming barriers of stigma, the beautiful uh, uh, artwork by Gideon Mendel, which hangs on our third floor, uh, includes this collection of images of people who are HIV positive. And now with our school groups, we conduct a workshop with them where we encourage them to focus on one of those images and imagine the life of the person they see there and what it was like for that person to overcome stigmas attached to HIV and AIDS. 
And that experience for them to walk a mile in someone else's shoes is really eye-opening as they think about what somebody might face. And given that we've all experienced the impact of the virus over the last few years, uh, in what ways we stigmatize people because of their state of their health. But it's also a chance just to kick a ball around with people. Uh, sometimes our, uh, the way that we overcome barriers can be as simple as throwing out a football and encouraging these young people from St. Benedict School to play football with the homeless guys. If we're connecting different parts of the city, we're also connecting supply and demand. Uh, the principles and practice of economics remind us of how important that is. Um, but perhaps that's a bit too complicated and maybe a more straightforward way of describing it in Richard Branson's terms is, screw it, let's just do it. So we're pleased that we're able to continue to bring together those who want to feed the hungry and those who are hungry. Uh, and we continue to do that serving over 161,000 meals in 2022, an 85% increase on the level of, level of feeding that we were doing before COVID. And you'll see that one of the reasons for that is we've added a third leg to our offer over the last few years, which is as well as the breakfast and the lunch are served, distributing sandwiches, which are made by different churches around the city, brought to the Dennis Hurley Centre, and then distributed to people after they've had their hot lunch. And we're very grateful for all We've had offers of food, large and small, through the years. This is Tusa, our IT company, who were donating food on Mandela Day in 20. And people coming in to prepare the food. This from a local uh, college uh, teaching catering skills, and they came in to help make the food. The number of volunteer hours has really increased, uh, which has helped us to serve as many meals as we have. You'll notice after the break during the COVID lockdown, it took a while for numbers to increase and a while for our homeless volunteers to come back to volunteering, but now the numbers are high and continue to be high. The equivalent, we calculate, of 337,000 rand of free labour in 2022. All of the previous schools who used to come regularly to volunteer with us, for example here, Fatima Dominican Convent School, uh, are now back and working with us. And also some younger ones keen to learn. Here's some younger learners from uh, Holy Family College who came in one day. Mandela Day uh, continues to be a key point in the year. Sometimes the donations that people make are helpful. Here a group donating blankets to those who are still living in the lockdown shelters, now the open, uh, safe open sleeping space behind the Jewish club. And our street store returned in 2022. That's our uh, annual event with Grace Family Church, bringing together thousands and thousands of items of clothing, over 200 volunteers, serving almost a thousand people during the course of a morning, not just with clothes, but also with uh, haircuts and foot washing, uh, great food, and a chance to share the space and to learn about each other. The abundance of generosity uh, at that event is quite extraordinary. Uh, washing the feet of homeless people is something which perhaps not everyone would queue up to do, but I'm delighted uh, that Leanne Banks, who is a member of Grace Family Church and is one of our and is our administrator, was there uh, prepared to literally roll up her sleeves and get involved with all the work that was going on during Street Store. And our Street Lit book program uh, that I mentioned earlier is obviously a great example of connecting supply and demand. There are people who have books that they no longer have space for. There are people who want to buy books and our street link book vendors bring them together. Here, a couple of our vendors, uh, Vusi and uh, Alvin at the um, Home and Garden exhibition at the Durban Exhibition Centre last year. That also means bringing together people who have skills and need places to use them. So we were very pleased that DUT continue to send their fifth year chiropractic students to come and work at the centre and provide free chiropractic to anyone who needs it. Here, Illa Thompson, who runs the Street Lit Book Program and carries an awful lot of heavy boxes, benefiting from their skills. And also more informally, uh, Illa clearly has have a lot of, does have a lot of need for work on her back. And Dion is a, a massage therapist who was working as a volunteer in the kitchen and provided some, uh, uh, some useful massage for our workers when he came in. I think a big part of our success as an organization is working with and creating networks 
So Durban Connections or The Good Neighbour would be appropriate books to focus on when thinking. Clearly the Street Lit programme is all about networks. I mentioned earlier, earlier networking with people who want to donate books, but also networking with organisations that are willing to host us. So here one of our booksellers, Mkhulisi, at the Durban Playhouse, and the Playhouse, the Sneddon Theatre, uh, the uh, venues where the KZN Orchestra perform, have continued to provide venues for us to sell, as well as malls, markets, um, and, uh, and other places. And St John's is more than just a storeroom, they actually continue to work closely with us. For example, they helped provide a pair of spectacles to one of our booksellers who was in need of them. It's also impressive how the vendors develop their own networks. Here is one of our great vendors, uh, Eric, who's normally selling at the Durban Botanic Gardens. He started selling at the Durban Jewish Club and became so interested and so well informed about the work of the Durban Jewish Club and the Durban Holocaust Centre that he's now a regular tour guide at the Holocaust Centre. And the uh, people there are delighted at the uh, energy and the knowledge that he brings to his work there. Networks of faith and government are ways in which we bring together different religions and people involved in different aspects of government. Here, the US Consul General and Linné visiting the Hurley Center and seen not just with Tracy R. Cook, but with uh, Dr. A.V. Muhammad from the And sometimes it's about connecting different networks. I mentioned earlier the young Jewish students, well, they, when they came to do a tour of the mosque, it was uh, at the same time as a group of Jesuits from around Africa who are studying just outside Durban. So an opportunity for those two networks of people of faith to come together in a third space of faith and share their experiences. And bringing NGOs together is part of our role as well. Here, for example, uh, the Amnesty International organization uh, hosting a workshop at the Dennis Hurley Center uh, involving some of the people we already work with, but also some people we don't normally connect with so that we can expand uh, our uh, connections. Sometimes we find partners in unusual ways. Uh, we discovered uh, that we shared a connection with an organization that does physical training and, and, and trains personal, personal trainers. And they came along and provided some uh, physical training. For and we continue at a national level to drive the National Homeless Network. Uh, the 2022 National Conversation was held by our colleagues in Johannesburg and here a group of us uh, uh, meeting with other members of the core group of the National Homeless Network. Uh, you'll notice all the Durbanites are huddled up in scarves and coats. It was a Joburg in November but still far too cold for Durbanites. So there's the end of part one of our review.